Hello, my fellow Gadotians. Today we're going to be taking a look through the repository's organization to have an idea of how the different directories are related to each other. So in the main project, we have a whole bunch of like top level files that kind of do the git configuration to get an idea of which files should be ignored from git and other things. Um, there's general uh, just uh, general information about the project as a whole, like who the authors are, what the license is, that kind of stuff. You've got the logos, and you also have, most importantly, the S construct and these pi files here. Um, Godot builds itself using a Python based build tool called scons, which reads an S construct file to determine how it should take in scons parameters that you pass to it and figure out like which compiler to use, what options to use when compiling, how to find source code files to include. And these pi files are just helper functions and whatnot that they've written for that. Um, now there's a particular ordering to how to read the various directories. That makes it a little bit easier to comprehend because I know it's just like a whole big mass of folders. So we're going to start off with third party. Okay, third party is basically a copy paste of any source code from another project that's open source, which Godot is including inside of it. Um, so if they have some dependency on another library that does a task better than they would if they were to write it themselves, they just pull in that person's code and they use it. Um, the next bit is drivers. So drivers are where um, your computer, and if you're if you're not aware, drivers are software that teach other software how to work with hardware on a computer, right? So you have speakers, you have a graphics API, you have, you know, whatever. You've got different things about how to interact with the hardware on the computer. Drivers are things that are software libraries that expose functionality to manipulate those things. So in the drivers folder, you'll find things that where Godot has written its own code to kind of wrap the, the drivers from the local operating system, and they can just get an idea of, uh, they can kind of convert the usage of those APIs to the Godot way of working with them. Um, and then they also have, if there's a third party library um, that does that job already, and they really like the way the third party code handles it, you might see some references to third party libraries inside the driver code. Okay, we're going to come back to the drivers again soon. So the next bit is core, all right? Core is basically the central part of the engine. It's got all the main classes that everything else in the engine uses, right? Object, variant, array. Um, it has things having to do with file access, you know, any kind of IO operation. It has encryption. It has general operating system operations. Um, and more importantly, it has a central OS class which doesn't really define any behavior explicitly, but it just says like how you can interact with an operating system using what's called an interface. We'll get into that stuff later. Um, and then um, when we jump over to platform, okay, platform is where if we actually look inside the folder, all these directories, when you build scons, you have to pass it which platform you want to build for. You pass it the name of one of these directories and it'll just go through and build for that platform, okay? Um, one, some things that you'll find in here include a main entry point for whatever the platform is, as well as the implementation of all the OS singleton logic, right? So I said before, there's an interface in core for the OS class, and you're gonna have an OS implementation that says like, okay, you wanna do that OS operation? Here's how you do that for this platform. And they, they outline all that stuff in these subfolders. Um, the next step is, oh, oh, wait, and I wanted to get back to drivers. Okay, so if you have, because the operating, because Godot uses those platform folders directly to kind of direct behavior for the scons to build, find stuff and build stuff, if you have any sort of behavior necessary for an operating system implementation that needs to be shared between different operating systems, you will also find that in drivers, okay? So for example, drivers contains an, a Unix section, which has an OS Unix implementation, which is shared between like Android and the, you know, the server build or the X11 build, you know, some, some other Linux adaptations, stuff like that. Um, and then we get to servers, okay? 
So servers are where anytime you have some kind of um, performance intensive operation, uh, you know, Godot, if you, if you have an application running on your computer, it'll be in a main thread um, on the CPU. If you do something really expensive, it's going to clog up the CPU time trying to handle that compute that computensive operation rather than updating the application, responding to user input, that kind of stuff. Makes the application slow and laggy. Nobody likes that. So what they'll do is they'll spawn another thread and they'll have another part of the engine that's really good at handling the expensive operation just do all that work in the other thread and it doesn't end up impacting the main thread. So the main thread can be responsive and handle stuff quickly while something else sits over here and does like really strict uh, data management and super fast processing and like tries to get everything done as quickly as possible without distracting anything else. Those are servers. They have dedicated servers for um, like rendering audio um, and translation, I think. There's another, there are two more they added for, uh, there's a physics one, sorry. Um, they've added more for Godot 4.0 for display management, like different windows, as well as uh, navigation. So there's a lot of different stuff in there. Um, we then get to, so this is the, each of the servers are exposed to the scripting API and they, they expose the low level high performance interface of how to work with the engine. Okay. Um, and they just accept requests from other things and then catalog all those requests and do them quickly. You get into scene, right? If we look inside scene, you're going to see it kind of broken down 2d, 3d audio animation, GUI main. If you look inside main, you're going to see things like node, scene tree okay looking familiar scene the scene directory is where all of the high level actual game framework stuff exists right so you'll things like object and resource and reference those will be present in core because they're like critical to everything that works right and servers like work off of you know abstract rids like resource identifications but the the scene system is like all built on top of that as a high level game framework and all the different nodes just send requests to the low level servers to do things or they'll have a little bit of custom functionality of their own. Um, so that's the scene. Then you get to main, right? So main kind of handles, aggregates all of that stuff and actually implements the setup of the project taking in command line arguments, um, doing you know the initialization of the various singletons and servers um, it creates the scene tree and starts running the scene like all that kind of stuff you'll find that in main it cleans up at the end of the process and they but they put it all in one main class so that within platform in the platform specific main entry points they can create an instance of the main class and have consistent boot up and tear down functionality across different operating systems um, then we have um, the editor. So all that stuff that I just mentioned is essentially the core, all right? And then you have adjacent to that, the editor, which is a completely separate project, essentially, um, that's just really one big Godot game written all in C++ with no assets for the most part, except maybe some icons. And, uh, and it just relies on core, right? This is key because core exposes a ton of interfaces, a ton of ways of interacting with systems without specifying what things are actually available to those systems, like specifically, right? So for example, it, it says, here's a scripting language system. You can create a script and execute scripting operations and the editor knows it can do that. But then like it doesn't actually know what scripting languages exist or the specifics of how they work. That's where you get to modules, okay? So if you go into modules, you will see concrete implementations of tons of interfaces that are present in core. And you will also see tons of just additional things added to kind of the scene folder kind of content, like just new nodes, new resources, that sort of thing. Um, and so you have like GD script, right? There's mono for C-sharp support. And down here we'll see visual script. 
So you, you get the idea. Like they just, you kind of just create things that plug into the existing content inside of core. Um, and if you add certain code into your modules, which there's documentation on, in the docs for it, um, then you can also add things for the editor as well. Um, like you can create an editor plugin in C++ code that's part of a module so that adding and removing the, mo mo the module from your build just automatically adds and removes features from the Godot editor as well. Another thing is if you have different modules that need to be dependent on one another, you don't just want to add a, you know, a module reference to another module um, because the modules themselves can be compiled in or out of the engine in their entirety when you pass compilation options. So instead, you'll go into a module, for example, GD Native, and uh, if you have like different modules that depend on GD Native features, you would create subfolders inside of that module. And every module has this like SC sub and register types things where S construct is going in here and doing additional sub operations and you're registering types to the class DB in the reflection system to be exposed to the scripting API. And uh, if you do that in this module for the GD native stuff, then the SC sub can then say, okay, also look in these other directories as well. So you can jump to say native script and you end up with it having its own SC sub and register types. Okay, so you have a sub module within a module. And um, the, you look in here like plugin script does that, XR, which is the VR and AR functionality, right? You've, you've got this kind of stuff where they all have access to the GD native API. <clears throat> okay, so then we have doc. Doc com contains the XML API documentation that you'll see, like it generates the API docs that are present in the official website, uh, the official doc site. Um, you then have, let's see, I think tests, this is your unit tests that they have written. There's not a whole lot, but it, it's a pretty good amount. Um, and you can run the unit tests by passing in um, parameters to Godot itself, I think. Like you run the Godot executable and say like something about tests. And there's some, again, the docs has info on that. Um, and then you also have miscellaneous. Miscellaneous contains really miscellaneous junk. I mean, it's like you've got Git hooks for like automatically executing things when you do Git operations. It has CI configuration. It's got um, being continuous integration with CI. Um, dist is like certain things that different distributions of Godot need. Like for, for HTML export, you've got like the HTML wrapper page that your game sits in and stuff like that. Um, and then scripts are just like helpful scripts that they've written for the project. Um, I don't think there's a lot more to it besides that. Let's see, core, doc, drivers, editor main. Da, 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 da. Yep, that's everything. All right, um, I hope that was enlightening. Um, before I get into specifics of the various sections of code, um, I want to make sure that everyone has a decent understanding of C++ itself uh, based on you know being a newbie who only knows some GDScript right, or, or various concepts of GDScript, but you don't know C++. Um, I'm planning on creating a whole different series that covers um, translating GDScript concepts to C++ concepts. And if you're not familiar with C++ already to some extent, um, then you may feel free to watch that stuff. Um, I'm likely going to create like a whole separate series and I'll just kind of mention it in the description um, that you can link to it whenever I have that up. And then I will also be putting together a, um, I have markdown notes that I've made for that entire series as well as um, this summary. Uh, and the markdown stuff for this goes into a lot more detail um, about the dependencies between each of the sections of code. Um, I will be putting this online. So deconstructing Godot URL, you can go in here and I have different files on it. I go to repo organization. You can see I've literally broken down like all the different folders and what they do. And then I have a slight like dependency tree and you can go into an even deeper breakdown of each of the dependencies that they have. Okay. So feel free to check this repository out. I'm going to be updating it over time with um, the actual content of the like GD script to C++ teaching. Um, and I'm going to try and burn through that series as quickly as I can to get back to the source code because I want to make sure that knowledge base is present before I move on with the source code stuff. Um, but yeah, 
let me know if you guys are enjoying the series so far. Sorry, I tried to make this qu pretty quick, but uh, thanks for sticking around and wait on for the next video.